Welcome to Streamline News for Friday, March 16th, 2012. Brought to you by SwimOutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. I'm Jeff Cummings here at the Mansfield Natatorium, the site of the Division II NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships. Now, before we do a quick recap of last night's competition in, in college, we got to go all the way over to Australia to talk about all the big news that happened at the Australian Olympic Trials. Starting off with Ian Thorpe not making the final of the 200 freestyle. 149.91 was his time in semifinals to get 12th place. He went 149.16 in prelims. That time wouldn't still have not have made him into the final. He was out in 24-7 and came back in 27-4, then 28-5 and 29-1. Definitely not the kind of swimming we see usually from Ian Thorpe. So Ian will be now looking to the Hunter Freestyle as his last chance to make the Olympic team. Ryan Napoleon is riding high after making the team in the 400. He's a top qualifier in the 200 free with a 147.51. Women's Hunter Fly Final, Alicia Coots and Jessica Shipper went 1-2 in that event. Coots was 57-59, Shipper was 57-88. In third place was the reigning Olympic champion Libby Trickett, 58-64. A lot of people probably weren't counting on Libby to be that fast. She took a year off after 2009, came back to the sport, hadn't really been performing all that well, had been flying under the radar, as opposed to someone like Ian Thorpe who had been flying, who had been everybody had been uh, watching and following closely. She got third with a very respectable 58-64. All three, the top three times were under the FINA A cut, but of course only the top two get to go. Men's Hunter Breast, as expected, was a Christian springer Brenton Ricard battle. And it was Christian Springer who got to the wall first, his first time under a minute, 59-91. It's also the only swim under a minute so far this year. Ricard was a 1-0-13. The women's 400 free was Kylie Palmer, 40340 with a new Australian record. Four swimmers were under the FINA A cut. It says a lot about Australian distance swimming. Bronte Barrett was the one who got second with a 40574. Three semifinal races took place today. The women's 100 breasts, we got to see what Liesl Jones is capable of after her suffering a um, middle ear infection. She said it kind of affected her a little bit. Liesl and Leaston Pickett will be the ones to watch in the final. Men's hunter back, Hayden Stokel, who was the Olympic bronze medalist, went 53-73. Ashley Delaney will be the second fastest qualifier. Men, women's hunter back semis. Belinda Hawking went 59-39. She's the third swimmer under a minute in 2012 after Emily Seabom and Missy Franklin. Seabom kind of cruised through semis. She went a 1-0-0-6. So a lot of great news coming out of the Australian Olympic trials and a lot more bound to happen today. We're going to see what happens and follow SwimmingWorld.com for the latest. So let's go over to Brazil where they're having the South American Championships. Now a lot of Brazilians may be using this meet to get some qualifying for the Olympics. I believe it is one of their Olympic qualifying meets. But someone like Cedro Cielo, who's already on the Olympic team, doesn't need to rest very much. And he just cruised through the 53 prelims, 23.01. He could kind of do that in his sleep and probably did do it in his sleep. He probably just woke up and said, let's just swim a 23.0 today. We'll see what he does in the final. Now, Felipe Silva, who is the world champion in the 50 breaststroke, went 27-3 to win that event. And then the 100 breast went 1-0-0-7-6. So pretty good, promising swims for him. Over in Amsterdam, the Amsterdam Swim Cup took place, and Renomi Kroma Wijojo was 24-24 in the 53. It's second in the world behind Fran Halsell's 24-13. Marlene Veldhaus had a baby, as you remember, about two years ago, and now looks good in her return to the Olympics. She went at 24.52. So the Dutch 50 freestylers are looking great. We'll have to wait to see what that Hunter Free looks like later on in the week to see what those Dutch are going to be putting up. They're the reigning Olympic and world champions in that event. Now let's talk some uh, college meets, Division I meet. What a barn burner in that women's 200 IM. Caitlin Leverance, 200 IM, 151.7, just absolutely mind-blowing. Katika Hosu, 151.8, just a great race. And just remember, Elizabeth Beisel wasn't in that final. She got disqualified for a false start in prelims, but she did put up a good time in the 400 IM in prelims today, 401. So we'll be all looking to see what she does in the finals, as well as Caitlin and Katinka. We'll see if who, who could get to the wall first and how far under four minutes they can go. 
Arianna Vanderpool Wallace was upset in the 50 freestyle. It was Lee Jensen who got to the wall first, and it was Margot Gear who was second. So it was kind of surprising. Vanderpool Wallace was swimming in her home pool, but couldn't get her, her win in her senior year in the 50 free. Cal is a big lead over Stanford, and it's going to be still a great race. Cal is looking good, but again, you can't count anybody out until that last race. Over in D2, Drury is on pace to repeat as national champions. Um, we had a great battle last night in the men's 200 freestyle. Andre Seri and Yaroslav Denshenko. 135.61 was the time for Andre Seri to break a 19-year-old NCAA record. Very fast swim. And then Andre this afternoon leading off Wayne State's 800 freestyle relay, 135.05. So the pressure was off. He had the record. Just wanted to see how much further he can go. It was an amazing swim to see him be able to do that this morning. And of course, he had a little bit of clearer water. Probably just um, obviously helped him a little bit more. So later on this weekend, on Sunday, the French Olympic trials begin. There's a lot of storylines that will be coming from that. We'll be looking to see if Elaine Bernard can get on the team and um, be able to defend his 100 freestyle Olympic title. Um, the the co-world champions in the men's 100 back, Jeremy Stravius and Camille Lacour, we'll see what they can put up. Nobody's broken 53 yet, but they be the first ones to do it this year. And then we got, of course, the, the dynamic uh, middle distance freestylers, Yannick Alnel and Camille Mufa. Now remember, Yannick Alnel is not doing the 400 freestyle. He's just focusing on the 100 and 200 as uh, likely a way to make sure that he is ready to go in the individual 200 and for the French 800 freestyle relay. And he didn't want to do two 400 freestyles um, and possibly ruin his chances of having a good result in that 200 free. And finally, the London Aquatic Center has its potential first international meet post-Olympics set up. Um, they are possibly going to be hosting the 2016 European Championships, which will be the final big meet for European swimmers before they go over to Rio de Janeiro for the Olympic Games. So um, London's very happy that they have started to secure the legacy for the London Aquatic Center, and um, we'll see what happens with that. Um, I believe that uh, bid will be made in September. That's going to do it for Streamline News today. We'll see you on Monday for more recaps from around the world.